I had every intention of filming myself fishing from the bank today. This is how that went. Three, huh? Feels like minus 16. Well, let's just go see. Let's go try to catch a fish. Don't slip and fall in the water. All right. Hmm. Nope. Not worth it. What are you doing? So, here we are, back in the garage, and uh, we're going to go through my tackle crate today, see what I take with me uh, whenever I go out on the water for a tournament. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go through some of my boxes that I take with me on a normal kayak fishing tournament day, and uh, try not to make it too long, but just uh, give you a brief rundown of what I take, and maybe highlight a few things that I really like. Uh, to use on a normal day, we're going to start with this box right here. This is my terminal tackle box. I keep this right underneath my seat. Um, that way I can get to it at all times and it's there. I never even take it out, even when I'm driving. It just stays there all the time. So anyway, this is it. I pretty much just a basic terminal tackle box. Um, I would say... I use this a lot. This is a quarter ounce shaky head hook. I get these from Slowtown Custom Lures. Um, I throw a shaky head quite often. It's one of my confidence baits. And uh, this is a very, very good shaky head um, jig head. So that's definitely uh, something that I keep a lot of. I buy those in bulk. Um, these are just your standard. I think I even have a package of them up here. Yeah. Just your one uh EWG worm hook. I use those for when I drop shot. Um, and then I also just use those for my wacky rig hook. I don't really see any reason not to use them. I hook up well with them and they seem to work fine. So I use, uh, I use those a lot. I just have my tungsten up here, drop shot weights, pretty much standard cylinder drop shot weights. Maybe a little heavier than some of you guys use. But I like to get down there and, and stay down there. Um, but this is my terminal tackle box. All right, next. This is my crate that I bring with me on all my tournaments. I keep the same boxes in there all the time. I don't ever take them out. I don't ever, you know, change them much around. I'm pretty much just, uh, if it doesn't fit in one of these boxes, then it doesn't get taken with me. And I do... Every now and then I'll, uh, you know, take a few things out and leave a few things in depending on what's going on. But so here's the first box we'll look at. This is my little jerk bait box. I've got a bunch of jerk baits that are coming um, that I don't have yet that are actually, they're actually being painted for me right now. Um, this is my jerk bait box and my, for the most part, my lipless box. I probably throw these, well, not very often. I throw them in the winter time, in the early spring, same with the jerk bait. That's pretty much it. Now they'll still stay in there just because one, they keep my boxes from bouncing around. So everything has a spot and its spot is right here. So there's that. Box number two. Deep diving crankbaits, a few swim bait type things and some jigging spoons some spy baits i can count on one hand how many times i've actually thrown these i do know they catch fish ouch got it and then some five and six xds just for your regular deep cranking 
Um, I do not use this box very often. This is a specialty box to me. It's just not something that gets a lot of use. But I know exactly where it is and it keeps the rest of my boxes from flopping around. So there's that one. Next. Now, here we go. We're getting into some stuff. This is my top water box. This is a boneyard colored skirmish baits pen dragon. Got three of those. I also have a 130 out here somewhere. There it is. Here's the 130. There's the 110. I do use this one, just not as much as I use the 110. And I also have a black one and a, a clear one, but this gets the majority of the work. A few frogs, I can count on the on one hand um, the amount of lakes within 50 miles of me that have enough grass to even fish a frog. I just have them, just in case. Uh, and I have some small buzz baits that I do use periodically a few spooks i do not throw a spook probably near as much as i should and then a few poppers some that are kind of small some that are big some wake baits anyway this is my pretty standard top water box and if it's like i said not in here i usually don't carry it with me but this is typically good enough to to get me by Next, we have our square bill box. I do enjoy a good square bill. These are all going to be either six cents, which I have a few of, Strike King, just the KVD 1.5, or what I have the majority of in here is the Skirmish Baits square bill, painted by Dwayne Beatty himself. And I have quite a few of those. This is probably my favorite color, Beatty Shad. I mean, Shad don't change color much. So I use this color quite a bit. Don't, I do throw crop patterns. Uh, I like this color, um, kind of a dark with a red belly. I like that color. And then I have your chartreuse black backs for whenever the occasion arises. But for the most part, I like to stick to the shad colors. Just kind of kind of what I have the most confidence in. All right, next. We have a medium diving box. Um same thing. I actually have some more of these that are coming um that are actually getting painted right now too. But, um, but yeah, this is my medium diving box. Kind of the same thing. I like to stick to kind of the shad patterns. On these, though, I will say I probably throw more red in these than I do square bills or even some other colors. But I still, it's really hard to beat just a good old shad pattern, uh, in my opinion. I do like the greens, uh, green crawl colors and uh and the red colors but yeah it's pretty tough to beat a good shad pattern at least in my opinion and last the heaviest of the bunch the old yig box um this is all the jigs that i take with me I do love throwing a jig. Uh, I try to have these halfway separated into the lightest ones, which would be three eighths ounce, half ounce, and maybe three quarter ounce. Um, these are more than likely gonna be uh, Santone uh, finesse jigs. I do like a good round ball finesse jig. Most of these are gonna be either Santone finesse jigs or Booyah finance jigs. I, I like a round ball jig without much stuff um i just i kind of like a a small profile of jig um it's just kind of 
kind of what I enjoy throwing. Uh, and I also, this is a pretty common trailer that I use. Lucky enough to have one on this one um, from a trip. This is just a Zoom um, Twin Tail Grub, Fat Albert Twin Tail Grub. It's got really good action. They're cheap. You can find them anywhere. So I like those for a good jig trailer. These are my swim jigs up here. Some white and then some bluegill pattern and black and blue. So I use this box a lot. I enjoy throwing jigs. Um, I need to get me some more peanut butter. And, oh, these are, yeah, these are tungsten jigs. Forgot that I had these in there. Some tungsten jigs, black and blue, peanut butter and jelly, some green pumpkin. And um, I do have a few tungsten that I did forget about, but I do need to get a few more um, PB and J jigs. because I don't have very many. Pretty standard jig box, but I do love digging in that thing. So, now then, I have these. Super upscale containers. Uh, this one probably had turkey in it. This one might have had ham. Don't know. And I'm sure that we got this one probably from my grandma on a Thanksgiving with leftovers in it. Because that's way fancier than something I would buy. She probably didn't write chatterbaits on it though. I'm sure I probably did that. But anyway, let's just start with that one. I don't throw chatterbaits a lot. I have them. I know they're good. I have a handful of them. They're just sort of mixed in there. It is what it is. I just don't throw them that often. I would rather, like I said, one, we don't have very much grass. Two, kind of a spinnerbait guy. So anyway, chatterbaits, I understand they have their place. I have plenty of them. And if the need arises, I'm ready to throw it anytime. But uh, over here on Beaver Lake and these Highland Reservoirs, I just don't throw them that much. Mmm. I do love a buzz bait. These are quarter ounce buzz baits. I use a Zoom uh, Ultra Vibe Speed Crawl as a little trailer on there. Take the skirt off. These are the jam. I do love throwing those. What do we have here? Aha! Uh -huh. We have spinner baits. Oh, that one's in the wrong spot. Edit, cut two. We have spinner baits. This is the one that I usually carry my willow blades in. I couldn't see a, another way to separate them other than just by that. So, this is my favorite spinner bait. I don't, they're probably not a nickel's worth of difference between a lot of these, but this is a Accent Spinnerbait uh, River Special half ounce with a 3.75 inch uh, Rage Swimmer trailer. Um, it is something that I have thrown a lot and I will continue to throw a lot. And then these are my Colorado blade and other blade. Um, great big one ounce spinner bait with the orange kicker blade. I feel like that I'm gonna catch a fish on this this year. Maybe here pretty soon. I just don't know that I have or have, but I have one just in case. All right, so there's all the hard stuff. Now then, on to my favorite part, soft plastics. I pretty much have your standard fare of green pumpkin, some worms, some craws. I take my stuff, my, my plastics out of their original package and I put them in these Ziploc bags. You would be amazed at how much of a space saver that really is. It is wildly more efficient and they take up way less space. So your standard green pumpkin stuff, um, craws, worms, some swim bait stuff, uh, some tubes. There's my jig trailers, uh, stick worms, sankos, whatever you want to call them. Some flipping baits. Those are Reaction Innovations Sweet Beaver, I think. Uh, my flukes. Yep. 
Uh, and then I have your regular black and blue jig trailers, sweet beavers, craws, craws, more craws, more stuff. Um, black and blue Sankos. I mean, these get, that's not a secret. Those get a ton of work. Uh, then I have some of my white stuff. Don't have a lot because I don't throw it a lot other than spinnerbait and topwater mostly. Uh, mostly these are actually all of these are just trailers or I might find myself flipping at a bed fish with one but for the most part that's just my white my white trailers and then I have these because I saw Greg Blanchard throwing them so I basically just copied what he threw and I do love to drop shot and I have caught fish on these so it is what it is then I have some with a little bit of blue and for whenever I want to throw a jig with uh, some blue in it. So that's pretty much it. But last but not least, these worms right here are my most favorite worms that I own. Without a doubt, no question, I've caught more fish on this worm in this color, this one and this one, than any other worms that I own. All right. So, if it will ever warm up, I am hoping that I can start getting prepared. Oh, I forgot something. And I also did not talk about any Ned Rig stuff. I got a bunch of Ned Rig worms. I need to learn how to throw them. Where was I at? Oh, yeah. So, I'd like to do a little rod and reel setup for how I throw all these baits. And I may do that once again before I actually start getting prepared for the Hobie BOS down on uh, Broken Bow Lake. But I have some time, but it also is closing in pretty fast. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, commenting, subscribing, and uh, we will see you on the next one.